Hello, we're going to attempt to put together Children's Corner Taylor Baby Bubble. It's not a difficult task, but being visual, I like to show people the same way. Here you will see I have a front and a back of the fabric and the lining. All seams on this are quarter inch. Please, please adhere to that quarter inch. It's very important. It, otherwise, it will not fit properly. Some people have a quarter inch foot they can use. Some machines have a quarter inch marker on their stitch, which I have, so I can select my quarter inch stitch. If you don't have any of those, put your needle down measure over a quarter of inch and use a piece of painter's tape or electrical tape to mark where your fabric should ride. It's important. Now, this is the front fabric. Open it out and then you're going to take your back and you're going to lay it on top right sides to right sides. You're going to pick one side to sew together. Doesn't matter which one, whichever one you pick. Then you're going to take it to your sewing machine. Excuse me if it's bumpy, but this is a first for me, so I'm doing this by myself. You're going to take it to your machine. I want you to be able to see exactly what I'm doing here. I'm not sure if it's too much light. But I can't shut the light off on my machine. And you're going to stitch that seam So I now have the front and the back together at one seam. You're going to put that aside. You're now going to take your lining and you're going to do the same thing. In order to make sure you're doing the same thing and they match, my suggestion is to take them over to your, your counter, lay down your lining pieces that match your fabric pieces. So they match. Now in order to Make sure I sew the same seam. I'm going to pull it up this way. And because I'm such a visual person, and some of you are also, I'm going to put a pin in this just to make sure I'm right. Because now if I lay this down, it's going to be right. And it will all go together nicely when I'm ready to sew the whole thing together. So now you want to take this and you want to do the same thing. Just make sure they match. Make sure when you lay them together, because you don't want to pick your lining up or fold your lining over. You want to make sure your seam is away from this fabric, just like this. My seam is here, so my front my right side of my lining will be facing the right side of my bubble. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to sew this on my machine with a quarter inch seam.
So now my lining and my bubble have one seam sewn together. What we're going to do now is you want to, I'm not doing it at this moment, but you should, is press your seams open so that they're flat. I'm just going to finger press where I'm sewing for now because I don't want to take the time to go press and leave you girls sitting here. So I'm just going to finger press them open. You're going to take and pin your bubble. You're going to pin this together at your seams. I have to figure out where the camera goes here. So you're going to open your seams, pin it together at the seam. I like to take a pin and put it through the seam just to make sure I'm dead on, which I'm not. Same thing on the bottom. You want to do this when it's flat because as you see, my lining is just a hair longer than the fabric and it shouldn't be, but it's just the way I cut it. So you're going to leave that side seam open. But I'm not doing anything with that side seam yet. So if you're comfortable pinning and you have to pin, then please go ahead and pin the whole thing. I only pin in places where I know it has to match. Like I said, I've done these so many times. It, I'm sure I'm going to skip something that you need to know. And if I do, please send me an email and I will share that email with everybody. Sorry, I'm wasting your time doing this, but see, I'm off here. And that is because it's shifted. Very important you have a flat space to lay this out. You need to make sure your crotch pieces line up as well as your top. We're not sewing the crotch pieces just yet either, so you don't need to worry about sewing that yet. We're just going to sew across the top and across the legs. You'll notice I have markings on the bottom of the leg both legs. That marking is where we're going to make the casing for the elastic and the legs to go when we get there. If you press, please try not to get those markings near the iron just yet because I use iron off marker. If you need to press the whole thing, then put a pin in there so that you have a mark so you know where you're going. So you just take a, a pin, just put it in the line so you know when you get this almost assembled, you'll know where you're going to stop to make your casing for your lining. So now you're going to take and sew all the way around the neck, the, sh the shoulders, the sleeve, the shoulders here, all the way to this side. And you will stop here. You're not putting this side seam together either. Both side seams are staying open. 
So I'll take you over here and you get to listen to my noisy machine so. And I use a shorter stitch length here, 2.0. Pivot to see if I'm where I want to be, and I'm not. I am now. If you're unsure and you can't see through things, don't be afraid to mark it. Use a wash away, use an iron away, mark your quarter inch at the edge so that. You don't lose where you're at. Because it's it, this these patterns it's very important to not keep an accurate quarter inch seam allowance. should have had one of these done, but I didn't. Would have been easier for you if I had already had it stitched. My machine is cranky. It needs to go in and get cleaned out, checked over. I need to part with her, but I don't want to. So I keep pushing her along. Pivoting at the corners is hard. If you've got a small stitch link, it makes it easier. It will turn quicker. you're laying this out, if your lining is longer than your fabric, like I just did, don't be afraid to trim it back. Then you can see your fabric. I can see my fabric because it's a print and this is a very lightweight fabric. My hands were getting tired cutting these all out. Okay. So I just finished cut it, sewing all around the top. Came up one side, around the neck, the arms, around the front neck, to the side seam. I have to get used to this because it's so backwards for me looking at this. Now I'm going to stitch my legs together. So you're going to take it from the same place where the side seam is open and you're going to stitch to the crotch. And for this I'm going to turn it over because I like my fabric outside of my needle. I'm going to do my quarter inch seam here. So you're just going to stitch right into the crotch The 
I'm leaving the crotch open. See, I'm not going to stitch it. I'm going to go over to the other side of the crotch and go to the rest of the leg. Get to the side seam. Make sure it's been pressed open. Watch out for pins, they're dangerous. By the way, I did just change my needle to do this project because I don't know how long my needle was in there. And now I'll do the last half of the other leg. See, my lining is really off on this one. I think most of you will be fine. This is the six month size. I kept it a little bitty one. So, now, everything is sewn the way it should be. Your crotches are open. Both crotches are open, both side seams are open. So now you're going to take and you're going to trim your curves, clip your curves, clip your corners. You want to make sure when you clip, you don't clip into your stitches. So for me, it's best if I do it on the white side because I can see the stitches. So I want to clip in. You want to have this gives you the ease to turn and have a full circle. So I'm not going to finish doing that. I'm just going to flip it and I'll, show, I'll fix it later. You're going to take your corners and you want to snip it at an angle across your corner. See, so just like this. I'm really having a hard time adjusting where this camera goes. And clip it here. You want that because that makes it easier to flip your corners and get a perfectly square corner. Anybody know when the scissor guy is around? Let me know. I have a few pair I need sharpened. Okay, so the corners are clipped. So now you're going to go inside the fabric and the lining, and we're going to turn it right side out. You want to turn it all, all the way out. When you get to your corners, if you have a little tool, which I have, but it must be on my ironing board. I have that purple thing. I'm gonna just take the end of a seam ripper. If you want something plastic and not pointed, and go up into your corners here. And just kind of give it a nice smoothing around. And see, by clipping that corner off like that at an angle, see how nice and crisp that corner is? And you want to do the same for this one. Do all four of them, and it looks so much nicer. Bend them. Why is it when you want something to work nicely, it doesn't? Nice thing about doing this on YouTube, you don't have to stay there and watch me do all this. You can bypass it all. You can tell me, go away. I probably would tell me to go away. Here, let's get these all up in there. 
If I knew how to do the video and pause it and go back, I would, but I'm sorry. I'm still so new to this stuff. You are my guinea pigs, ladies and gentlemen, if there are any. Let's get them up there nice and crisp. So I have four nice crisp corners. They're nice and square. And when you've clipped your curves, this will lay flat. Now this is when you would go to the iron and iron. Don't do what I'm about to do. You really need to iron this down flat because this is important that it all matches up nicely. If I mess this up, I can take it apart and fix it, but I'm not going to mess it up. So, we now have this cute little bubble. So you now have this cute little bubble that you can see is not sewn totally together. But you get your armhole, your necks, and your leg pieces. So now we're going to take this bubble, after you've pressed it flat, remember, do as I say, not as I'm doing. After you've pressed this flat, you're going to take your seams, that side seams that are not sewn together. I need to trim off a piece of fabric here. Hold on. So you're going to take your two side seams. I'm starting at the leg, leg side. You're going to make sure those seams are open because you've pressed them open and then you've pressed them flat. You're going to open up those two side seams. Like this, so they match. Then you're going to pin right in through there. Make sure it goes through both layers in the same place because this is very important that these match. So see, it comes through there in the seam and it goes through here in the seam. Now you're gonna pin this. Don't worry about the lining portion. You're gonna pin the fabric part first. This one is going to be sewn all the way through. The lining, you're going to leave a hole. Now, when you get to your shoulder seam, I mean your side seam top underneath the arm, this is the other one that you're going to make sure it matches up perfectly. So you're going to make sure your seam is opened on both sides. This is the one that's going to be seen by everybody, this seam, because it's right at the underarm. The one at the leg will be seen by everybody because it's on the side of their leg. So stick the pin through. Make sure it goes through both the same way. And then you're going to, because I, I took the small size, because I didn't want to frustrate you all with the six month size, because it's harder to do. Pin your lining as much as you can together. So it looks really weird. But what you're doing in essential is sewing it together. And you want to leave an opening in the middle, up here in the middle. So you want to start sewing from about here, maybe about two inches, three inches up from the leg, depending on the size you're doing, because you want to do a continuous stitch all the way around, 
leaving about, I don't know, four to five inch opening to turn the entire thing right side out because you're going to really mess this up when you do this. Because we are going to pull this outside. Pull this. So it's really kind of messy looking. Here's your good fabric pulled through the liner. And here's your lining fabric. I want to really show you a lot of this because this is the hard part. The rest of it's easy. So when you're pinning it, it looks crazy. So this is the second seam here. So see here, I'm going to start sewing at this point on my leg. And I'm going to have this pulled out of that opening that I just made when I'm doing the sewing. You will have more room than I do because you are doing larger sizes. So you start here. You're going to go across the seam. Make sure it doesn't slip because that's an important seam that matches. Then you're going to go all the way up to your underarm seam and make sure that still matches. And you're going to come around your other side. You have to keep moving. You have to stop and pivot and stop and pivot, and it's okay. It's not a race. And come down a couple of inches on this piece. It's hard to explain. So I'll show you once again. I'll take it all apart, and I'll show you once more so that you all can see it one more time. Mary Kettleson has done these as much as I have probably. And if she sees something that I should have pointed out better, she'll tell me. And I will come back and let you folks know. And Mary has done Children's Corners patterns way longer than I have. I've only done them for the last 14 years, so she has more experience. And you can't ask her a, a nicer person than Mary to show you what you did wrong. Because she does it nicely. So you're going to take your two legs on the side and you're going to match that seam. Sorry to repeat this, but I think this is the hardest part of the whole thing. So I really want you to understand it. And you're going to pin. I pin through the seam just to make sure the seam lines up. That one. Lunch to give me a hard time today. There we go. Now I got it. So, it's got a little bit of the lining. This is the probably the only thing I ever really pin is when I'm trying to match up some things like this. Don't pull your fabric because you are on the bias at this point, and you will stretch it. And then it won't fit right at all. sure this matches up. This is the tough one. Okay. So I'm going to start sewing and you will see I stop and start because you have to keep pulling your fabric around because you've got a circle now you're sewing. I hope you can see this. 
trying to bring you in as close as possible. I have a needle down, needle up position on my machine, and it comes in really handy, especially when you're starting and stopping a lot. Your fabric doesn't slip. So I stop and I move my stuff around so I don't get anything caught underneath. Make sure my edges are lined up. I don't have any puckers. And yeah, like I said, this is slow. Take your time. Don't be in a hurry. It's not a race. You want a nice, crisp seam. And you want a pretty looking garment. Okay, see how I mean? You gotta just keep pulling your stuff around. around some more. Yeah, sometimes you pull too much. So you go back. Like this top fabric really is too long. This is the hard part, like I told you. The very hard part. Don't sew over pins, ladies. It's not good for your machine. Don't get frustrated with this. It's timing. It's, it's... When you see the finished product, you're going to love it. Because you're going to have larger sizes, you're not going to fight as much as I am. This is the hazard of doing the little ones. But we need a couple little ones. So, I've sewn mine around. I've sewn my sides. And here we go. My sides are sewn. I have an opening. That opening will be hand sewn when we're done. Because now, after you've made sure you've pressed this thing really well, you're going to make a casing on the legs for the elastic. So... There's my first marking. This is all going to be pressed. I'm going to finger press as well as I can. And hope it's good. There's my marking there. And you're going to do it on the other side of the leg. Find your mark. Pin your mark. Press. Make sure it's pressed pretty well. I'm using my fingers wet, but it's not going to matter because when I press this, I'm going to kill any of my germs on it anyway. If it's not being cooperative, you can put your finger through and lay it flat. I have a nice little tool that does this. I know it's on my ironing board. So there's my other mark. So 
So I now have four pins that go across from the crotch to the crotch on each side. These are all girls that I cut out the fabric of. So with the girls, you want to go a quarter of an inch in to start your first side of your channel. So this is going to be for your elastic. So you're not doing any stitching on the side. You're just making a channel. want to do this before you sew it closed because you got to put the elastic in there. Make sure it's nice and flat. If, you, if you've pressed it like you should, it will be nice and flat. So I've made my first run, my channel right here. Now I'm going to go in and make my second run. Now on the second run, I want to be more than a quarter of an inch away because my elastic is exactly a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to move it over a bit so that my foot is not riding on those stitches. And now I'm going to do my second run. On this outfit, I'm using cream, so you can't even see it on the yellow. That's the other important thing, please. Try to have threads that match your fabrics. I sometimes will use one fabric on the outside, on my top thread, and one fabric on my lining. So now I have a tunnel. This is for my elastic to go through. You all have elastic already cut and pinned with your size tag. We all do. So I put mine down. I lost them. There it is. So you all have elastic cut with your size tag. So you're going to take one piece of the elastic now. Let's not lose any of that stuff. I like to use a safety pin to run my elastic through. So I just happen to find it, it's better for me. Do it however you wish. I do have a um, another fun little tool that you can use, but it's too big for something this small. It's great for larger pieces. So take this, go inside your crotch. And you want to be in that casing. You don't want to be on the other side. See how I'm right in the casing? Can you see my pin there? See my casing? So now I'm going to run my elastic in there, but I want to make sure I don't lose my elastic. So I am going to take and pin it right here for now, right on the edge, just so I get it in there. The other way you can do this if you're doing your own and you don't want to cut the elastic is take a piece of elastic from the beginning to the end, mark the length you need. And then you can run the elastic through, catch it on one side, and then pull it back to your mark. I just don't have all that elastic to be sending you folks lots and lots of it. So I'm just pulling my elastic through. I'm not left-handed, so please forgive me. There is a way to reverse this, but I don't know how to do it, so I can't help you. I'm doing it backwards. Here we 
just want to get that elastic all the way across. Now, if you've pressed your seams open nicely, that's going to slide right through there with no problem. See, I finger pressed mine, and it still slid through. But you've got to make sure those seams are open, or it's going to give you a hard time getting through there. And the reason for the girls being a quarter of an inch up is because you're going to have a ruffle on the bottom for the girls. You're doing a boys, you're going to start, stitch it just a bit outside of the edge. And then a bit more than a quarter of an inch from there. Because you don't want them to have a ruffle. I've gotten to the end here. See, I've gotten through. I'm just going to give it a little more tug to make sure I'm beyond that spot. So I'm beyond my marking. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to put a pin in here beyond where I want to stitch. And I'm going to go take the safety pin out. Because you don't want to have that in there if you're going to stitch. Because you might stitch it. So now you see I have it pinned. I'm going to take it into my machine. And I'm going to hope like heck I don't lose it. I like to stitch this one a couple of times, so I go back. I like to reinforce it so it's not going anywhere. So now my elastic is caught in there. Let me turn these stitches. Take off your excess threads. So now I can go back to this end where I had it pinned with a pin pin. Don't let go of it because it will go right in. And now you can ease up just a tiny bit. Keep your fingers on it. Don't lose it. And put a pin in there. Through the fabric and through the elastic so you don't lose it. Trust me, it's no fun losing that elastic in that casing. This one I'm doing just a step or two slower because I didn't want to pull my pin out. I was sure I caught some of that elastic. Now I have my elastic in there and you can adjust it so it's the fullness you need and it looks really cute it's a girl's so you want cute right so you get it nice so it'll fit nice but it's not gonna be snug because this elastic is soft and it has a lot of give trim your threads so you're gonna do that on both sides You've already done the hard part. So you're going to do the legs on both sides. So when you turn it right side out, you're going to have this really cute looking little leg. And it doesn't go all the way into the crotch because you only want part of it snug. So after you've done both, now we're going to work on sewing the crotch shut. I am not a fan of the snaps. Reason being is they don't tend to work well. They break when they're washed and dried in a dryer at a high heat. They tend to, to distort. I don't want to say they melt, but they distort. I don't like the metal snaps, especially for here in Arizona. It's too hot. And some people will put buttons there 
but you try buttoning a baby in the crotch when they're kicking you after you've changed the diaper. It doesn't work. So if you decide you want to do snaps because that's what you like, then this would already be sewn closed when you sewn, sewed the rest of the leg together. You would have sewn that over. But because I don't, because I like my crotch sewn shut, because let's face it, if a baby has a really bad day, you're changing the outfit anyway. You're going to take and turn it inside out. And you're going to match up your seams in the crotch. Now, if you thought the side seam was tough to match, this one's even worse. But it's worth it. it. It's it's worth your time. If you've lost your patience, leave it. Walk away. Go do something else. Come back later. I like the finished look. Some other people do them different than this. Some other people press their seam allowances and slide one leg inside one part of the crotch inside the other. That's how you're comfortable. Go ahead and do it. I'm not because mine never match. Pin these together. Now, you want your lining away from it. Now you're going to sew this together. And you, because it's a tight area, you really only need to sew the fabric. The lining you can sew by hand when you're done. It doesn't, it's not going to pull apart. And it's too hard to manipulate all this. So I'm just going to sew my fabric. And like I said, it's not easy. It's difficult, but it's worth it. Like I said, take your time. Use your needle down position because it's very important your fabric not slip and slide. Keep it smooth. I like to get just past that seam. So I'm into my lining. So you'll see I didn't sew the lining. The lining is still open. Now turn your little baby right side out. And you'll see, you get your crutch all sewn. So it's really cute. I mean, I can, I, my inside is still open, so I can still go in and put the other elastic in. So this all needs to be clipped. And I can do that because my side's still open. But make sure you clip it because when you press it, you want that flat. When I'm done with all of this and it's pressed, I like to go in and top stitch the whole top. That way when you when they wash and dry it, your lining doesn't shift, your fabric doesn't shift, it's held in place. So there, you have a cute little bubble. I did not give you buttons. So if you have buttons, it's marked for two on the top. I honestly think one is enough. I wouldn't put two up there. So here we go. Here's your cute little baby bubble. So I have to go back and do the other leg, but I need to do a lot of pressing and clipping before I do that. So if you have questions, I'm here. Email me at mapakettlenh at gmail.com. And it's it's really a cute little article. Thank you.